This is the third and final part to our three-part course on building a note app with Flutter and SQLite. Today we'll add the SQ Flight library that will help us work with our database. It would be recommended that you have some basic knowledge of relational databases as well as some basic knowledge of SQL, but it isn't required. In the last video we implemented the business logic for displaying, creating, editing and deleting our nodes and now we'll just add the database to it. Okay, so first of all, let's go to our pubspec.yml file and let's go to this dependencies section. There, I will paste the name of the library along with the version. If you're following along, this library is located on the Dart pub and you should see what the latest version is and use that. So let me paste in. Okay. Now we're going to create a class where we're going to write the code that interacts with our database. Let's create a new folder called providers and create a node provider class in it. Okay, now let me create an empty node provider class. Okay, now let's create a static property called DB of type database. This is going to be the instance of a database class that we will use to interact with our database. Okay, now that we have that down, I should import this database from our SQ flight library. Okay, now let's create the open method. Here we will initialize the database using the open database method from the SQLite package. Since the SQLite database is stored in a single file, we need to specify the path of that file. For the root of our path, we're going to use the getDatabasesPath method, also from the SQLite pack, and use the join method to join it with the name of our database. Okay, now let's import the join method from the path package and save that. Okay, now the next thing we should specify is the version. In this video, we won't delve that much into versions, but if you want, you can check out the API reference for the SQLite package to get more info on that. Here, we're just going to say that the version is one. Also, we're going to pass in the onCreate method, and that method is going to execute once our database is created. The onCreate method takes in two parameters, the database and the version, and we're going to make the onCreate method async. Now we'll just create one table and name it notes. Our notes table is going to have three properties, ID, which is going to be automatically generated and it's going to be the primary key for this table. And also we're going to have the title and the text, which are both going to be strings of text and both fields are going to be required. We can use these triple quotations to have a string spread out over multiple lines. Okay, so here we wrote the query for creating our notes table and here's how it goes. Here we have create table notes and in the parentheses we specify the fields that our table is going to have. First thing we pass in is the name of the first field, then the data type of that field and then we can add some constraints like primary key which means that this is the unique value for this column in the table. And here we have auto increment, which means that the ID is automatically going to be generated by the database management system. And then also we have our second parameter, also the name, the data type. Here we have a not null constraint. And that basically means that the field is required and that we need to input some kind of a value in it when we're inserting a record. Okay, now let's create another method called getNoteList. This method will simply fetch all the notes from the database and return them. Okay, so here we have that method and we're returning a future because this is going to be an awaitable task. And also we have this method async because we're going to do an asynchronous operation over here. And also we're returning the list of map of string dynamic because that's what our uh, query will basically return. Okay, so first we should check if the database is null, and if it is, we should initialize it using the open method we just wrote. Then we should just return our notes. Okay, that's now done. For getting our notes, we could write a raw SQL query, and that would definitely work, but SQLite, as most other SQL client libraries, has something called helper methods. With helper methods, we can execute SQL commands without risk of making a typo in a query, or making our database vulnerable to attacks such as SQL injection. For getting a list of all our notes, we can use the database.query helper method. That method takes in the table name as a required parameter. We can also pass in the where clause and other stuff to make it a full-fledged SQL query. But since we don't need to filter through our data in any way, we won't pass anything in as the where clause. Okay, now let's jump and write our method. Okay, now that that's done, let's go to our note list widget. Here we need to change some stuff to make our widget display the data from the database. Since we're going to use the get note list method, which is an asynchronous future method, we need some kind of a convenient way to display some type of loading while that method gets well completed. Flutter by default provides a solution called future builder. 
future builder takes in some type of future as a parameter and a widget builder. The future we're passing in is obviously the future that we are expecting some kind of a result from. And the builder is a function that takes in the builder context and the data snapshot as parameters. We use that to display the correct widgets based on the data that was given in the snapshot. In other words, if future still didn't return anything, we will know that from the snapshot. And if it did return some data, we can access it in order to display what we need. So let's go down to our list view and wrap it in a future builder. Okay, now that that's done, we should also pass in the future that we're intending to use in our future builder. And since we are not going to instantiate our node provider, but we're just going to use the static fields, we'll make everything in this class static. And here we'll just use node provider, import that, dot get node list. Okay, so by default, our builder method returning a list view, regardless of if we have the data or not, we should fix that with a simple if statement. Okay, so this snapshot.connection state can tell us the state of our future. If it's equal to connection state dot done, that means our future has finished doing its work. And now we can use the data and return our list view. But now, since we're using our notes from our getter property that just retrieves our in memory notes, we should use the notes that we get from our database. Okay, next is the data our future returned using snapshot.data so let me just replace that underscore nodes getter with our snapshot.data okay so here we done that i declared the notes as the snapshot.data and now we're using it over here and here okay now we can remove our nodes getter since i don't think it's used anywhere else let me check out that oh we also need to replace this notes.length so let me just do that and now we can remove it all right, now we need to provide a widget to be displayed when our future didn't yet return a result. So we'll just use a circular progress indicator and also center it on the screen. So here we have a if statement and over here we are going to return it. Okay, now let me run the app and we can together see how our app looks and if any of this works. And then we can move on. Okay, so as you can see nothing is displayed because there are no nodes in the database. We could manually insert some data with SQL, but let's just implement the logic for inserting notes in our app and then we can see our notes from the database shown over here. Here we are in our note provider and we're now going to create another static method called insert note and it's going to take in the map as its parameter to represent the note we're inserting. This is going to be an async method since our database operations are also asynchronous. So for inserting we will use the insert helper method that takes in the name of the table that we will insert our, our data into and the data itself as a parameter. And that's pretty much it for our inserting logic. Now let's go to our node widget and make the use of the code that we just wrote. Okay, so here the first thing we're going to change is the inserting code. First we get, have to go to the part where we insert our nodes and that's right over here. And now let's remove our in-memory solution. Okay, now we can use the insert node method that we just wrote. Let's import the node provider and we'll just pass in the same map we passed into our nodes list in the inherited widget. As you can see, we do not have to pass in the ID since that is automatically generated by the database, just as I said previously. Okay, now let's restart our app and see if our inserting note logic really works. Let's go over here, type in title and text and save that. And here we got an exception and it says that there is no such table as note. And that is true, I just have to add the s over there so what you can learn from this is that you should probably store your table names and your column names in some type of a variable to avoid this type of stupid mistakes but let me just save this and rerun this and see if this really works okay so our app is up and running again let's go to this plus sign type in the title and some text and save this and as you can see this is correctly fetched from the database and shown here. So we just determined that both our inserting logic and our displaying logic are working. Now the only two things we need to implement are editing of the nodes and deleting of them. So let's first do the editing. Let's here create a new static method called update note which will take in the note as our parameter. We're using our map same as before and for updating the record in the database we'll use the update helper method which takes in the table as its first required parameter 
and of course the data itself as its second parameter. If we leave it with just those parameters, the code we wrote will try to update every single record in the table which will obviously fail, because it will also try to update the ID, which is impossible since the ID is the primary key in this table and it cannot be changed. So we need a WHERE clause. WHERE clause is an optional string parameter. We will tell it to update only the notes that match the ID that was passed in with our note. Now we can write this purely as a raw string and concatenate the parts that are from our code but a more popular and a more wise solution is to have all of our parts that are coming from the code marked as a question mark and then pass the arguments in the WHERE args optional parameter. Our library will recognize the question marks and place the values from where args array into the question mark places safely. So since we need to check if the id is equal as our id is passed in from the note map, we will write id is equal to question mark and then in the where args we will place that id that we get from our note. Okay, that's pretty much it for the updating logic in our note provider. Let's now make use of it in our note widget. Okay, so over here we are getting the index of our node, which is not the smartest way now that we're working with the database. When we're using the index, that means we'll have to fetch all the nodes from the database and then just get the one we need with the index. The first thing that came to my mind is just passing the ID to the node widget and then querying the database for that specific node and then use the future builder to display our node data when we were editing, just as we did in the list, but that will impose some other issues related to the Flutter UI that are outside the scope of this course. So the simplest solution I came up with is that we just pass the whole node object in the node widget constructor instead of the index and by that we will know which node to update thanks to us having an ID in that object. Okay, so the first thing we did here is replace the index in the constructor and as a property with the node that we're going to use. Now let's remove this node's widget index and just say widget.node. Replace it over here as well. And now over here, let's just change this in-memory solution with our node provider one. And here let's create a new map where we'll specify our ID and also our title and our text. The reason I'm not just changing the note map up and then passing that in is because for some reason it's read-only and it's just easier to do it this way. So let's do it. Which dot note at ID and also the title and the text are going to be from our text controllers. Okay, and that seems to be pretty much it. Let me restart the app and see if we can edit our note. Okay, and that's not just pretty much it, we have this error too, but I'll just comment that out and we will handle the deleting after we test this. So let me restart the app. And of course, we have to go to our note list and pass in the note itself. So we're just going to say the note at index, actually the not note at index, but just the note. And that should take care of it, right? Oh, actually, it's notes at index. Okay, now that's correct. That's pretty much it. Let me reload the app completely. And we do not have any errors. We have our one note. Let's now try to edit it. Save. And it successfully was edited. But for some reason, it edited the text too. I probably just messed up something. Let me go and see in our note widget title, text, oh, I use the title controller at both of them. Well, let me now just take care of that, restart the app, now change it, change just the title and the text should remain the same, change just the text and that's pretty much it for the editing part. Okay, and finally deleting. Let's go again to our note provider create a static delete note method that will just take in the ID of the note, make that async. Now we will use the delete helper method to delete the note from the table. This helper method takes in the table name as its first parameter and we can and we will add the where clause. We're going to do it identically as we did it above in the update note method, taking in the advantage of the where args parameter. Okay, now that we have that, as you can see, we're deleting from our notes where the ID is equal to the ID passed in over here. And now let's just make use of it in our note widget. Let's find our onDelete method. It's right over 
here. And let's first make that method async because we're going to want to wait before our deletion is completed. And then when it's completed, we want to pop the page. So let's do that. Note provider dot delete note with the widget dot note at ID and just await that and save it. And now let me add another note just for the sake of us having a little bit more notes. Save that and now delete this one and it's nowhere to be found. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this course. I really hope you learned something from it. It took me some time to come up with all of this and record, edit and everything. So I would really appreciate it if you would smash on that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you want, you can go and follow me on Instagram. I post some random content related to programming there. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you next time.